Hey fellow entrepreneurs, Adam Dukes here and in this video we're going to talk about the cold hard truth of entrepreneurship. A lot of people don't talk about this. Well, let's just say not enough people talk about this. The truth of an entrepreneur. Uh, it's hard. It's very, very difficult. It's, it's a head game. I say it all the time. It's 90% mindset, 10% strategy, tactics, and luck. I'm convinced of that. I could probably make the argument it's 95-5 split. That's how important the mindset is. I was on a Twitter feed the, uh, earlier and someone said, what are you struggling with starting your online business? And some people were answering and the majority of it all had to do with, a lot of it was information overload, uh, but it was it was more of a mindset. It wasn't how do I build a funnel? How do I set up an email? How do I, a lot of the stuff that I talk about on the YouTubes, it wasn't really much of the how-to. It was more of the mindset stuff, the stuff they were struggling with internally. Uh, and that is, how the, it mindset is everything and I didn't really understand the importance of it until I read the slight edge and the miracle morning in late 2014 how important mindset was then I started to establish a, a morning routine from the miracle morning I've been doing that pretty much every single day since 2015 2014 I decided um, I print off my habits I print off my daily disciplines that I do each and every uh, Monday I print this sheet off Sunday night or Monday morning I'll print this off and I track it with pen and paper I have to do that it's absolutely essential uh, and then I, I keep track of it. I score it at the bottom and then I put them all in a little desk uh, my drawer down here and I can look back and see 78% that week I completed 78% of the tasks it's a mental boost it's a confidence boost uh, if it's a shitty week it does the opposite I'm like okay I got I got work to do you know I'm only at 63% or whatever the number is uh, that's how I this has been insanely helpful for my mind um, I just got back from taking a walk it's Easter Sunday uh, the kids went with their mom it's the first Easter I haven't spent with them it fucking sucks <laughs> I could sit here and dwell on it and uh, sit on the couch and whine and bitch and and like I said, dwell on the past and why they're not here. Or I could keep myself video busy with, this is YouTube video number three. I just did a bunch of yard work. I took a walk. I did the church, watched the church service on the TV since we're all still on lockdown during the quarantine. An idle mind is the devil's playground. So I have to keep myself busy or I go into cuckoo mode where I start thinking things, especially on like holidays, Easter being probably the first big holiday i think it's a big holiday for with kids you know um the first holiday that i haven't been with them so it was really hard all week i've been dreading this day um however we celebrated it yesterday we did the easter egg hunt yesterday got their easter baskets on the kitchen table yesterday morning when they woke up so yesterday was easter and that's how i solved that problem like and i'm, I'm not too like too down in the dumps today however i'm keeping myself busy i was talking to a friend the other day works in an office with employees and there's no employees there because we're on lockdown and he was saying how depressed he was because it's so quiet there's nobody there he still goes into the office but it's not buzzing the phones aren't ringing he's not hearing people talking and he was like I went in my uh, office and started uh, calling making phone calls or making sales calls something like that it's like I had to keep busy and that's the thing you have to keep your mind busy because you can go off into the weeds and get down these dark dark really weird rabbit holes um, up in your head, overthinking everything, overanalyzing everything. So I have a training that I put together uh, a couple weeks ago. This is just a little clip of the training, a little portion, the mindset portion of the training, arguably the most important part of the training. Uh, so I'm going to open up the feed here. Oops, let me switch the... There we go. And so let me open it up, hit, okay, there we go. So mastering your mind, this is your unfair advantage to unlocking the life of your dreams. I've talked about it before, working on your mindset, the six inches between your ears, this is something, it, it, there's no finish line. You're never done or complete or met. I guess not never really mastered it it's it's the quest to um, to constantly improve to get better each and every day each and every day each and every day so I have an m5 framework so Dan Kennedy came out with a marketing program called magnetic marketing years and years and years ago like pre-internet or late 90s maybe at the very like virgin infancy stages of uh, stages of the internet his thing was market message media that was the three m's it was kind of like a triangle they all work they all work with each other they all work off of each other and so i took dan's thing and i i added my flavor to it and i call it my m5 framework and here it is so it's mindset market message machine 
in media, machine being like automating it using online, uh, leveraging online software and tools to automate a lot of the process to do the heavy lifting for you to save you a ton of time. Now we're not going to talk about the machine here. I just want to go over my M5. We're going to talk about, like I said, the mindset. So number one, like I said, I can't say this point. I got started 10 years ago. This would be my number one piece of advice is to understand this principle. Business is 90% mindset, 10% strategy tactics or luck. Or, and luck, and or luck, I should say. Uh, the second piece of tips I will as well get in, build your email list, build your email list, build your email list. Those are the two pieces of advice. If I could go back and talk to the 2010 Adam, the 28 year old, the childless Adam, the probably a little bit skinnier Adam, baby faced Adam, I'd say uh, work on your mindset and build your email list. Both of those things every single day. Those are the two pieces of advice I'd give myself. So fear of judgment, I find this to be the absolute number one thing. Gary Vaynerchuk talks about it a lot because he's and he's right, is the fear of judgment. You are worried about your partner, your spouse, your mom, your dad, your cousins, your aunt, your uncle, your brother, your sister, your neighbor, your boss, your co-workers, or someone you went to high school with. You'd be surprised how many people fear the judgment of people they went to high school with, people they haven't talked to in 10, 15, 18, 20 plus years of what Susie from chemistry class <laughs> might think of your online business or whatever, your, your, your thoughts about Trump or Obama or Hillary or Joe Biden or whatever it is. You would be shocked how many people fear the judgment. Myself included, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm any better. Uh, I struggle with it too. I've gotten a lot better over the years. I'm not perfect though. There are some things that I'd like to say online and I will hold back a bit and it's funny because the people that have the big following especially on Twitter or really any following any social media channel these people are the ones that share their opinion um, unapologetically about whatever it is whether it's business politics whatever it's they don't hold back they have their own personality uh, they are the ones that have the big following because people really like seeing them um, the next one is fear of failure. That is a truth. Uh, that is a real thing. Fear of failure and fear of success. Some people think, oh shit, if I make all this money, you know, let, let's say you have like a drug habit, God forbid, or an alcohol problem or a gambling problem. And you're like, shit, if I had a ton of extra money, I'd be at the casino more or I'd be online betting or I'd spend more on weed or booze or cocaine or whatever it is that subconsciously can hold you back from success is because it's just going to wherever you're at now, success or more money is just going to amplify it. So that fear of success is a real thing, but obviously fear of failure. But I, I would argue fear of, fear of failure ties back to the fear of judgment that people aren't necessarily afraid to fail. They're afraid of what their mom might think, their dad might think, their sister, brother, cousin, all those other people might think. So it ties in with the fear of judgment. Self-doubt, this is another one. This is one that I've struggled with for many, many years. It's one that many, many people struggle with. Uh, actors, actresses, the big uber successful in Hollywood um, also s suffer from self-doubt as well. Uh, imposter syndrome, this is the fear of you not being good enough. Actually, I think I have the definition from the Google. It is the idea that you've only succeeded due to luck and not because of your talent or qualification. So you might be thinking, yes, absolutely. That is a big fear of mine. I see it all the time online. People are like, well, I don't know enough. I can't teach this or I can't share this or I can't sell this or I can't offer this as a product or a service. I don't know enough. This is extremely common. And I wanna uh, show you something that it's not just common for you. Tom Hanks has been open about imposter syndrome. Tina Fey from Saturday Night Live, the actress, has been open about it. Ryan Reynolds, the actor and um, fellow entrepreneur, actually. He owns a gin company, a cell phone company. He deals with it. There's struggles with it. Meryl Streep, one of the top actresses in the last, I don't know, 20, 30, 50 years. Uh, Serena Williams, the tennis player, she is open about imposter syndrome. And then Howard Schultz, the Starbucks CEO. That's just like six of many, many, many. Just Google celebrities imposter syndrome and there's articles for days um, talking about different celebrities that fear it or that struggle with it, I should say. So here's what Ryan Reynolds said. I went to a lot of events this year because of Deadpool. Deadpool was like wildly successful. I want to say it was like a billion dollars in, in, in sales. So you get into the tux and try and look like a grown up. But to be honest, I still feel like a freckle faced kid faking it until I make it. Like this guy's wildly successful and he still feels that way with a movie that's grossed over, I think a billion dollars. I think it's like the number one Number one rated R super, uh, I've never seen it. I'm not a, a superhero fan. Meryl Streep, another one, like I said, she is insanely successful. Been in movies for 30, 40, 50 years. You think, why would anyone want to see me again in a movie? And I don't know how to act anyway. So why am I doing this? This is someone who's had 
probably 50, 60, 70 movies under her belts, among other things, acting wise, and she still struggles with imposter syndrome. So if you have that fear or that imposter syndrome, know that you're not alone. The, 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 the people in Hollywood struggle with it too. And, and not just Hollywood, like I said, Serena Williams, athletes st struggle with it. And so do like CEOs, the Starbucks CEO. So a few of the things that I do that um, on a daily basis to help with my mindset is I try to read 20 minutes a day. Every single day, that's, I try to do it when I first wake up and drink in my morning cup of coffee before I touch any social media, before I touch any email, really before I do anything. I sit at the kitchen table, drink my coffee, drink my water, and read for 20 minutes. I try to meditate. Uh, actually, I box breathe. So I breathe in for four seconds, I hold for four, exhale for four, hold for four. So that's like the box. That's one box. And I try to do that 10 times. I typically do that as the coffee is brewing right before I read. Um, I do that literally on the, sometimes on the couch, sometimes laying on the floor. You could do it driving too though. <laughs> Don't close your eyes, but um, you can do it driving too though. Just It's a breathing exercise like Navy SEALs and people do it. Um, that I've found that to be better than, uh, or I've preferred that over meditation. I'm not saying it's better. Just for me, I liked it um, better. Box breathe, there we go. Um, journal. I journal every single night. Uh, typically at night I do. I write five things I'm grateful for every single day. And I try not to repeat the things. I try to write five things I'm grateful for that happened that day. And what's really powerful, I was just telling a buddy about this the other day, um, is throughout the day, I because I can't repeat the things. So throughout the day, I'm looking for things to be grateful for, things to jot down later. Because sometimes you'll sit down and it's not it's not easy writing five things down that you're grateful for after you've done it a while and you can't repeat things. You really got to think of things. So throughout the day, I look at things in a different light. I just, you know, I'm, I'm Grateful it's 75 and sunny today. I'm grateful I was able to pull the weeds today in the backyard. Stuff, shit that I would never, that I took for granted that I would never even think of to write down that I'm grateful for. It's really powerful, that exercise. So I like to, I, I've been doing it at night, but I used to do the gratitude in the morning as well. Just find what, find a time, write down three things, five things you're grateful for. Another thing I do with journaling is um, a brain dump. Well, I will just set a timer for 10 minutes and just write whatever is on my mind on a piece of paper. And typically it's three or four or five sheets of paper and it's the good, the bad, and the ugly. I mean, anything that is in my head, I'm writing down anything. It could be a bad dream. It could be, I mean, anything. It could be a movie I watched. It could be a piece of food that I have stuck in my tooth, whatever the hell it is. If it's a thought in my mind, I jot it down. And then what I do, I'll rip it up into like a million little pieces, or sometimes I light it on fire just so there is zero chance anyone could see it. Cause some of the stuff's it's out there, you know, not like super dark, but it's out there. But I find ripping it up and or lighting on a fire, just something about getting it out of your head. Not that those thoughts go away forever, uh, but something about getting it out of your head and on a piece of paper and then destroying that piece of paper. It feels damn good. I don't do that every day. Um, you know, once every couple months I'll do it. I, I don't have like a timetable, but occasionally I'll just sit down and just grab three, four sheets of paper and just write, 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 whatever is on my mind. Definitely, definitely recommend doing that. Visualize, that's another one, a big one I do. So I'll flash up a, a picture of my dad and I. I took this picture, actually I had someone do it. It was a picture of my dad and I at my parents' house in California four years ago. And I had, I hired a guy from Fiverr and he photoshopped my dad and I on the Masters, on a whole of the Masters that I found on Google. The Masters is the golf tournament down in Augusta, Georgia, which actually would be happening right now, today, um, but not with the quarantine. It's not uh, happening. It's something I've always wanted to do is take my dad to the Masters. His birthday is April 9th, so it always falls right around his birthday. And I wanted it to be a surprise. It was the ultimate sports bucket list item. And so that picture that I just showed you, I had it on my desktop. This very computer, this very desktop, this very chair, everything was the same in 2016. I would minimize all my windows and I would literally just sit back like this and look at that image and just stare at it for a couple minutes a day. I'd do it two or three times a day. And I would think of, I would, um, 
I would try to use my five senses. I would say like, what color car were we driving? What was the smell of the airplane? How big, how tall was the hotel we were staying in? Was it one story? Was it 17 stories? Were we on the third floor, the 18th floor? Whatever it was. Uh, what color are the beds, the cushions? Are they soft? Are they hard? The grass walking into Augusta. What was the smell? The birds chirping, the feel of the ground. Again, I was trying to use all five of my senses. Now I had nothing, none of this planned out. I've never been before. So I was just purely making it all up. Um, but in 2016, him and I did go to the Masters, um, and I credit it big time to visualizing it every single day. I would write it down, I would say it out loud, but the visualization exercise with that Photoshop picture was absolutely the reason um, I was able to afford it was the big thing. If we went on the practice round on the Wednesday practice round, which was $1,400 a ticket, so that was 2800 bucks just for the tickets, and I forgot the flight and hotel. It ended up being about a little over $4,000, but I couldn't afford that before. Um, but the visualization exercise, I was able to, I had a killer month in, I had a good month in January on my Shopify store at the time. And then February, I blew it out of the park. March, I did pretty well. I was, I had the money to take a trip of a lifetime. So again, I credit the visualization of sitting there in this very chair, looking at the picture of my dad and I, that was purely Photoshopped and just looking at it over and over and over again. And just, like I said, you, using those five senses is really, really powerful. Anytime I do any type of visualization, I try to use those five senses as much as I can. Uh, and then a daily walk. Like I said, I just literally took a walk. <laughs> I came up with this video idea. I literally did. This is video number three today that I've done. And I had some ideas in my head. Uh, most of these videos, I don't script them. Um, I, I'll put the slides together, but I don't script them. And I'd say 95% of the videos I do from start to finish. No edits, uh, uh, like no as you can probably tell, no, I like, I don't like, I, 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 it's not chunks of videos, you know, I literally go from start to finish and I finish the whole thing in one take. I, I try to do it as much as possible. Sometimes I'll screw it up video before this I did, but far majority of them is from start to finish. So, um, Again, like I said, I went out and took a walk, came up with this idea. I kind of had an idea about the mindset. I saw some people on Twitter struggling with mindset things. So I was like, man, I really want to make a video. I should put some slides together. And I'm like, oh, I have that training. So on my walk, I was like, I have that training. I'll just kind of grab those slides right from that training and just cover that. So that's uh, how, and how I, um, the daily walk is good for uh, the mindset to kind of calm the nerves. I don't bring my phone with me. It's just pure silence and just walk around the block. Uh, but I get a ton of ideas when I take my daily walks. Um, next one is what do you want? I find most people have no idea <laughs> or they're very vague with what they want. More money, a bigger house, you know, that's about it. Like you have to get super specific. So I have a dream lifestyle worksheet. I have a complete video that I just filmed, I think a week and a half ago, right there, that you'll have a link to the Dream Lifestyle Worksheet. It's just a spreadsheet of how to track your numbers. Had some people in the comments in YouTube commenting that they've done it. Um, they've done it before, I think it was, but it's a really cool exercise. It's a lot of fun to do. I definitely recommend, check out that video to figure out what you want. I think that's the last slide. Yes, it is. So that is key, is figuring out what you want. So many people, like I said, they're, they're not crystal clear with what they want. They have no certainty what they want. I have my goal right here, my monthly goal. It's on a piece of, po it's a post-it note on my uh, monitor that I see every single damn day. Man, I don't like <laughs> My fat ass, I shake my arm, I see my fat f hanging out like that. Reminds me of that movie with Cameron Diaz and uh, Christina Applegate that used to shake, I forgot what they called it, but I need to start doing some um, some tricep exercise, man. This is not good. Or we're in a long sleeve shirt while doing these damn videos. So, hey, if you like these types of videos, make sure you hit subscribe, click that little bell notification because I release a few videos each and every week for your viewing pleasure. Also, if you'd like to check out my 50 minute workday blueprint, there's a, well, actually the link is down here, I'll flash up the the, uh, the little, uh, the, the image of the blueprint, God, I've tied them. My words can't get out of my damn mouth, but check it out at the link below totaldads.com forward slash five zero. It's a blueprint on how to work a 50 minute work, um, work day. It's, it's possible. It absolutely is possible. I find a lot of people say I don't have money and I don't have time to start an online business. And I am removing both of those false bullshit beliefs in that guide. So as always, if you have comments, questions, or concerns, please drop them down below. I'll do my absolute best to answer those questions. If I can't answer them, we're going to find someone who can, we'll find a resource or point in the right direction, right resource, find someone who can answer that or solve that problem for you. As always, thank you so much for watching. I truly do appreciate it.